I'm the Director of Marketing for SHIELD, and I want to welcome everybody to our webinar titled Understanding the New Quality of Patient Care Star Rating, formerly HHC Star Rating. Participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you have a question, please type it on the chat box to your right. Your presenter today is Lance Tortolano of Tortolano & Company. Uh, just to let everyone know, this webinar is being recorded. Um, if you miss any portion of this webinar, it will be posted on the SHIELD Healthcare community site. At this point, I'd like to pass the presentation on to Lance. Lance. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you for being here and just give a brief background of myself. Um, I've been in home care for quite a long time, and before that, I was in public accounting. Um, I started the firm, my firm, in order to bridge the gap between what we saw as a gap between the financial side and the operational side of home health. Uh, that being said, um, our clients range from smaller agencies up to clients that have censuses over a thousand. So we're pretty well versed in dealing with a wide range of different aspects. Um, so today we're going to talk about the effects of the Home Health Compare website's new edition of star ratings. There are four major topics we are going to cover today. Uh, the first topic we are going to discuss is why the star ratings were created. Second, we are going to review the data that drives the star ratings. And then we are going to discuss how your agency's ratings are actually going to be calculated. Lastly, we're going to go over how to use the ratings to your advantage and how the ratings will actually impact your agency. We are also going to discuss some ideas on how to improve your ratings and how to use those ratings so that the community understands what your agency does, how well it does it, and use it as a marketing tool to attract new referral sources and new patients. So let's get started. Star ratings are a direct result of the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act required the quality of care that Medicare providers supply to patients be made publicly available. The ACA wanted consumers to become educated and understand the information that was provided to them in a logical and easy to understand format. The information that consumers use comes from OASIS data and home health CAP surveys. Home health agencies are not the only Medicare providers that are currently using or subject to a star rating system. Nursing homes, physicians, and Medicare Advantage plans are all rated using their own criteria for star ratings. Later this year, hospitals are also going to be included in the star ratings system. When the Affordable Care Act was passed, the law called for more transparent reporting of data to consumers. The data needed to be easy to understand and easily accessible by consumers and patients. The first part of the process was actually getting the data out to the public and making it available. This was done with the current version of Home Health Compare. The addition of star ratings to Home Health Compare's data is one more step in meeting the Affordable Care Act guidelines of transparency and easier understanding of health care quality. Adding stars to all CMS compare sites is a continuation of that progress. Much of the data is easily understandable by healthcare professionals, but not so much by patients and the families that use that data. Consumers need to have access to the data and need to be able to understand the data to make informed decisions. So CMS came up with a five-star rating system. Not every home care measure, every home health compare rating measure is going to be included with a rate, uh, star rating. 
there's only going to be about nine that are going to be activated at this point. There are going to be three process measures and six outcome measures that are going to be included. And that information is going to be a combination of patient CAP surveys and OASIS data that you submit from your agency. As an educated consumer who knows the ins and outs of a product or a service, healthcare is one of those areas that tends to lag behind with education. In healthcare, even some of the most educated consumers can have a hard time understanding who is a good provider unless they receive a referral from a friend or another family member. To make it easier for every consumer and not have to rely on a recommendation, the Affordable Care Act wanted solid data that was not biased from opinion to be provided to the users of healthcare, whether that be a patient or a family member selecting the provider for the family member. The ACA wanted consumers to know who was providing the care and how well that provider did at helping patients improve and heal. By ranking providers against one another, it would also foster the providers would be forced into this idea that they have to improve because the public is finally seeing that data. Since the data is now going more public and going to be more easily available, the idea was underperforming agencies would be forced to provi provide and improve their quality of data that would be overall better quality to the patients. The data reported by Home Health Compare comes from two sources. Patient surveys that your agency pays an outside vendor to complete is just one part of the data. OASIS data that your agency submits from start of care admissions and end of episode discharges go into the database as well. CAP surveys done by phone and by mail will be used in the ratings calculation. Your agency data will also play the biggest role. So the ratings come directly from your agency's OASIS data. Accuracy is very important. How well you manage your patient's outcomes and how well your agency tracks OASIS outcomes may potentially hurt your view by the public's perception or improve the public's perception of your agency. Having a strong quality program in place now is not going to be something that you need to do, but it's going to be essential to do in order to survive. Educating your patients on responding to surveys about their care should also be incorporated into your discharge packets that you leave with a uh, patient. Other providers that are currently under star ratings include nursing homes, physicians, dialysis facilities, hospitals, which are coming up later this year, and Medicare Advantage plans. Each type of facility has their own set of quality measures that are reported to the public. The star ratings are immediately presented to consumers when searching for a facility or a provider. Physicians have their own set of data and quality measures that are rated. Dialysis facilities use star ratings as a measure of their ability to provide an overall approach to the care provided, similar to one of the measures that home health agencies will be under. Hospitals have yet to take part in the star rating system. CMS is waiting for home health agencies to come online, and then hospitals will be next. The specific date for hospital data has yet to be released, but we expect it to be sometime later this summer. Medicare Advantage plans have their own unique system to inform those patients to go on and subscribers to go on to enter in their own specific demographics, including the medications they take and different so that a specific type of plan that's key to their needs can be selected. 
This allows them to have a well laid out analysis of information available to them so they can make the best decision on the of plan. Your agency is going to receive nine star ratings based on three process measures and six outcome mes measures. The two process measures your agency will be ranked on patient and caregiver education and information about a flu shot. The other measures are going to be based on how well you were able to provide care, how fast you were able to provide care, and whether or not a patient improved from the beginning of the episode until the end of the episode. These measures are heavily skewed to the type of patient your agency serves. If your population is younger and older, you're likely to have this then an agency has a higher as a younger population and has a higher turnover of patients that heal more quickly. Please note that not all agencies are going to qualify for star ratings, and we'll get to that later on and explain why. Certain criteria that we will expand on that and explain that how your agency can become a rated participant. The three process measures are timely initiation of care, education on all medications provided to patients and caregivers, and whether or not the patient received a flu shot or if in the timely initiation of care is based on how quickly an agency was able to open the patient and perform a step of care from the referral date. You want to be mindful on takes for an agency, in your agency particularly, to open that patient once you receive the referral. That's based on the start of care date. So the faster you're able to provide care to that patient from receiving the referral, the better your rating will be. Patient education on drugs and medications in the home and use by the patient is important. You want to make sure your staff are reviewing the medications with patients and their caregivers and also providing information on those medications and the drugs to the patients and caregivers. Flu shots will be based on the current OASIS and your staff when they open the case talking to the patient and finding out if a patient needs a flu shot, if one needs to be offered, or if type of educational material needs to be can receive that flu shot. Basically, that measure just wants to make sure that the patient is aware that they qualify for a flu shot if, if possible and in season. The six outcome measures are strictly quality-based. And this gets, can get very technical because it's all coming directly from the OASIS that your agency completes. How well patients do from the beginning of care to the end of care ambulating will be rated. Whether or not patients are able to transfer from their bed to a wheelchair or some other device is also going to be included in the ratings. Patients are also going to have information available to see how well prior patients did at improving and bathing on their own. Also, we're going to focus, the process will also focus on whether or not accurate and correctly managed and if information on patient was. Again, a lot of these top a lot of these star ratings are going to come directly from your OASIS information. So having quality staff that understand how to complete a OASIS is going to be very critical to how well your ratings get perceived and get reported online. Whether or not shortness of breath improves, and then again, that comes from the OASIS data, and whether or not the patient was able to improve or decline. And a lot of these characteristics, as you know, will be from patient-specific. So if your population 
and your census tends to be on the sicker side, some of these measures may not look very good for your agency. Well, some of the other measures that don't have star ratings look great. Hospitalization rates is one of the biggest areas that most agencies have been focused on for the past few years. And it's something that CMS is keying in on with this new star ratings. Not only is this important for the star ratings, but many agencies have focused a lot of attention on making sure that a reduction in hospitalization occurs for their patients and have introduced many new programs that combat that issue. As agencies advance and learn to manage this hospitalization issue, the ability to assist a patient and possibly reduce hospitalization has improved the relationship between an agency and a hospital if it's not an affiliate. There is some room for improvement from the data just to make sure this continues to happen. So when you're looking at the star ratings, you want to make sure that you are actively working with your agency to improve the overall rating and to make sure that your hospitalization rate is decreasing. Out of all the ratings, hospitalization rates are the one rating that you want to be the lowest. All of the other eight measures you want to be as high as possible but for the hospitalization rate, you want to make sure that that is the lowest rating as possible. To qualify for star ratings is not going to be easy for smaller agencies. Larger agencies that have at least a couple hundred patients are more likely to see a full set of star ratings opposed to agencies with 50 patients. For an agency to qualify for star ratings, it must be met. An agency must have their data reported on Home Health Compare. An agency needs to have 40 completed patient surveys over four quarters. This goes back to the Home Health Compare that you have vendors and the vendor on your behalf. Uh, educating patients on these surveys and returning them by mail or taking the phone calls is going to be critical because if you don't have these 40 surveys, your agency will not have ratings on home health compare. And while it's the issue right now, as more and more patients and consumers and even referral sources are aware of this, they're going to be running the reports, checking up on your agency. An agency also must have submitted at least 20 completed episodes. A completed episode needs to have one start of care and one final claim, one end of episode discharge oasis. You need to have 20 of those. If you don't have 20, you won't qualify. Like I said earlier, for smaller agencies, report and the accumulation of star ratings is going to be difficult as opposed to the larger agencies who have more patients. Overall, your agency must be able to provide quality data on at least five of the nine measures and have reportable data. If data is not present for any five of the nine measures, the star rating system will not be activated. That can change in the future when more data is uploaded as more and more agencies submit data and as more and newer data gets loaded into the system. So if initially your agency doesn't have any data on home health compare right now that qualifies for star ratings, you can in the future have that rating available. And as the system is currently set up, if you don't have any data reported, it will just show like a dash or have a note stating that the data wasn't available. The initial data used will be from calendar year 2014, so last year, the most current complete year. The hospitalization measure, however, will run from October 1st, 2013 through September 30th of 2014. Going forward, data is going to be updated each quarter along with the other portions of Home Health Compare, which will also translate to updated star ratings. So you do have time 
to prepare. You do have time to improve, and you do have time to front. How the ratings are actually calculated is going to be somewhat confusing to some. Um, it's somewhat technical, so I'll try to explain it slowly and as best as I can. Um, and if you have questions at the end, feel free to let me know. The formula and algorithm used by CMS can get pretty complicated. So first, agency scores for each of the nine measures are sorted from low to high. After being sorted, the scores are divided up into 10 smaller equal groups. These groups are called deciles. After a decile is created, each of the nine measures gets assigned to a location. A location is a preliminary rating based on tenths and assigned a preliminary decimal rating. The preliminary decimal rating starts at 0.5 and works its way up to 5 in 0.5 increments. So you have 0.5, you have 1, 1.5, and, and 2, and so forth. The third step is to adjust the initial rating. The initial rating will be adjusted for the statistical significance between the agency score and the national score. If the calculation produces a result that is between two ratings groups, the rating will be adjusted up if a 0 .05 difference is found. If the difference is less than 0 .05, your agency will keep the initial rating that was just calculated. This is probably the most two confusing slides because of the way that the data is actually recap. Each measure is broken up into ten groups called deciles. The deciles are then sorted from and assigned a numeric value based on 0.5 increments that start from 0.5 and end at 5. If one of the ratings is in the middle of two stars, then that rating will be adjusted up to the next grouping of 0.5 if the difference is greater than 0 0.05. If it's less than 0 0.05, from this point, your agency will re receive the star for that measure based on that final calculation. The overall score your agency receives is the easiest calculation. It's basically just an average of all of your measures combined. The average of all of your individual measures gets averaged and rounded to the nearest 0.5 or half star. This is probably going to be one of the most important scores and the one that's seen most frequently and used most frequently when comparing agency to agency. This is also going to probably be the score that really helps a consumer decide on whether or not they're going to select one agency over another. As more agencies catch on, the marketing and the agents will get more advanced. However, in the beginning, we're likely to see the overall rating be used. The actual star ratings are broken up, as you see on your screen. Most agencies are going to fall between three stars and four. Right now, from the initial data that's going to be released in July, 61% of agencies are rated between three stars and four stars. Less than 1% of all agencies have a one star rating which is good news. 11% of agencies nationwide have a one and a half or two star rating. But almost 17% the top performance 
states are receiving four and a half stars and five stars. Out of all the agencies in this initial round of data reported, almost 11% reached these two categories of excellence. Only 2.5% of all agencies across the country have earned a full five-star rating. If your agency is in one of the lowest star ratings, there's definitely the ability to improve and reach those higher levels. But again, sometimes that's going to definitely rely on the type of patients you have and your population. So how is this going to affect your agency? If you're one of the lucky agencies that have quality entrenched throughout your agency and it's responsive and patients are you know, quickly turned over, you're going to be pretty pleased with your result. Think of this star rating as like a hotel rating. If you could stay at a five-star hotel as opposed to a two- or three-star hotel, which would you rather stay at if money was no object? Translate that method of thinking and that line of thinking into home health compare star rating. for the five star better they feel more comfortable with that type of rating and from that rating that agency appears to provide the best data best care I'm sorry what many patients and consumers are not going to understand though is how those ratings get calculated they're not going to understand all the nuances those ratings and how some agencies are not getting rated some agencies are. So if you're a small agency and you have no home health compared data measures and the overall reporting, then you may not benefit at all from this new rating. However, if you're a larger agency and you have phenomenal results, and you have the highest ratings, you know, if you're in the fours, the fives, you're at the top of your game, then this is definitely going to be something that you want to promote and you want to be able to use. The location of the star data is not going to change in the home health compare site. So just go to Medicare.com, compare, and to your voter agency to look at the current data. Once the data becomes available in July, you'll be able to see the actual stars. We don't have an actual release date yet for the star ratings. CMS should be letting us know soon, but they still haven't done so. How are you going to make the system work for your agency it is always dependent upon how much effort you put in and whether or not you actually have ratings on site. First, you want to make sure that your quality assurance staff are well versed and understand the rating system. And that goes, of course, back to how well they understand the OASIS data when they're reviewing it and how well your field staff are trained at answering and scoring the OASIS themselves. If you have any doubts about whether your staff are not well versed, now is the time to begin training. You need to make sure that your staff are well aware of the impact of the STAR data and the OASIS data that they complete will have on your overall agency growth and appearance to the public now. The QA team should work directly with clinicians so the clinicians have a thorough understanding of how to answer and score the OASIS data and questions. I should also make sure that agency-wide goals are being met. So that means you probably, if you're not already, start to set up data and goals for where you want to see your progress and outcomes in the next month, two months, and three months. Your QA staff can monitor these and make sure that goals are being met. And if not, 
make them as part of the management meeting or be brought to management's attention. Internal tracking of data and review should be used in case conferences, staff meetings, and should be displayed and discussed at professional advisory committee meetings. If your agency is large enough and fortunate to have an educator on premises and on site that works with clinical staff, the educator should be including OASIS refresher courses, especially with these initial set of measures so that staff know how to answer them accurately and to the best of their ability. Also, we need to talk about your CAPS survey vendor. Your CAPS, soft, CAPS survey vendor is someone that provides that level and that communication between your patient and the CMS CAPS website. You have no control necessarily once that data gets uploaded, but you do have a good control over how that information gets to the CAPS vendor. One thing you want to consider, and this can sometimes be a deterrent in even submitting the data, is whether or not the ease and ability to upload the data is there. If your CAPS vendor is not progressive, they're not easily accessible, they don't provide reports, then it could impact your overall rating and whether or not you actually do receive a rating. So you want to make sure that your CAPS vendor has an easy to use website, that uploading files isn't troublesome, you get reports on how many surveys were answered and you get results from those surveys so you can track that data and discuss it internally. There's a lot of good information that comes from a CAP survey that can help your agency. So sure that you partner up with a good CAP survey vendor in improving your overall rating. Since surveys aren't cheap, you should be getting your money's worth. If your agency isn't getting the data or getting the reports, I suggest you speak to them and discuss how you can get that information so you can use it internally and prepare for any potential negative consequences of a bad star rating. Continuing on the with the effects on your agency. Most of the agencies with the stellar four and a half and five star ratings are going to be posting links to the Home Health Compare website. That's a given. We've already seen some agencies start to post their preliminary reports on their websites and link to their competitors. So what they do is they go to Home Health Compare, they put in their agency, and then they select their next two or three closest competitors and they use that data and they put it on their website so you can compare their agency against yours. What some of the agencies have also done with the new preliminary reports is create a PDF of that and also put it on their website so that as soon as a potential patient, a referral source, or a caregiver goes to that agency's website, it's right there in front of them, usually with like some type of star logo stating that this agency has has been rated with this many stars. Even though it's not publicly available, some agencies are making it available because it makes them look good. But this can be a double-edged sword. If your ratings are great, and by great they are four or above, then you will definitely want to make sure everyone's aware of this. But if your agency falls into a lower grouping, making people aware of the ratings may not be so good for your agency. The silver lining, however, is that during the next update between now and then, you can improve, and you can use that information to show that you have improved and the quality of your care is patient-centered and you are making an effort to make sure that your patients receive the best possible care. The data that is in your agency's favor in each individual measure can be used in a couple ways. You can break apart that data and instead of using your overall rating, you can use each measure's individual rating and develop some type of material that can be distributed to referral sources and patients that show how well you do 
for bathing, for ambulation, uh, hospitalization rates. If your other ratings aren't so good and they're bringing down your average, but those ratings, those three ratings were higher, you definitely want to use those. So it's not necessarily always a bad thing if you're in one of the lower ratings. You may have some strong, good quality ratings that you want to make sure are available. And there's no nothing wrong with making sure that those aren't present. And that includes on your blogs, on your Twitter, Facebook. Um, just make sure that people are aware of it. Because other agencies, your com competitors, are going to be doing this quickly. So you have to get on this very quickly. You can also get free publicity by sending out press releases to newspapers, radio stations, and if you have local TV stations, depending on where your agency is located, they can also do a feature story. Obviously, they're going to want higher rated agencies, um, but if you have specific measures that look good, they can de you can definitely partner up with them and have some type of feature. Whenever you send the information out, however, you just can't send out that you're a five-star agency or a four-star agency. You need to explain and educate the public, your patients, your referral sources on what that data means. Other agencies are going to be putting it out there, but if you provide the information and the education on what it means and where to go to review that information, you'll look better than just throwing out random information. And the problem with the part of these ratings is that no one outside of healthcare sometimes understands what the ratings mean. And it can be difficult sometimes in a crisis for a family member or a patient to really sit down and review that information. So if you have it publicly available, you can make it easy to understand and it's legitimate, then there's no sense in not providing it to patients as a marketing tool. If you are going to compare your agency to others, though, you should use the results as a stepping stone. Um, you can use the results internally and externally. Internally, you should be setting up benchmarks. Make sure that you benchmark against yourself from quarter to quarter. Make sure that you benchmark against your competitors. Make sure that year to year you benchmark yourself. It's all about improving, and that's the major goal of the star ratings. If they just don't want CMS and the Affordable Care Act just doesn't want data to sit there on a website. They want to educate well-informed decisions. So by making yourself a component of that and making your agency an educator in that information field, you're going to be able to attract more patients and look better to referral sources. Internally, that data should be consistently updated and tracked before it even gets out to the public. That way you're well aware if there's any issues, if there's a decrease or if there's an increase. You're going to be well ahead of the others. Hospitals are also going to want to see that strong data and strong improvement in data is occurring. As more ACOs are formed and as more groups combined merge and become affiliated with one another, agencies that have higher ratings and are more publicly well represented by this data will fare much better. All right, so let's open it up to questions. Eric, you want to take over? Great. Thank you, Lance. That was a great presentation. Very informative. Um, if you have questions, please type it on the chat box to your right. Uh, while we wait for questions, uh, if you missed any information on this webinar, uh, you can go to shieldhealthcare.com slash star ratings FAQ, and it does have the three process measures and the nine outcome measures that uh, Lance spoke of. So um, I encourage anybody who um, didn't take good notes to log on to shieldhealthcare.com slash star ratings FAQ and you can download that information. So um, a couple of questions here. Um, will our star rating affect our reimbursement? Question. 
affect your reimbursement. Star ratings are just to report your quality outcomes. They do not have any effect on reimbursement right now. That could change, but as of right now, star ratings are strictly for consumers to make an educated decision. Great. So, Lance, in your opinion, what's a high enough rating to start advertising? Um, if 61% of agencies are between three and four stars, should we start marketing at three stars? If your agency is between three, three and a half, it's recommended that you start using the information and you can start marketing with it. Obviously, if you're in the three and a half to three range, you do have some high quality measures. So you may want to pick out some of those specific measures and use those to lead with and to show off against your competitors. Um, the agencies, of course, that have four and above are going to easily have no problem using their overall rating because the underlying data shows how well and how strong they've been able to continue to provide quality care. Great. Thanks, Lance. Um, question from Desiree. What do you consider a high volume for an agency? High volume typically is anywhere north of 200 patients on a consistent basis. As agencies reach a census of two to 300, they're considered high volume. Uh, it also depends on the area. If you're a rural you may have smaller census counts, but for city and metropolitan based agencies, having a census of two to 300 isn't unheard of. Right. Um, is the adjustment based on a 5% or a 0.05% variance? The adjustment's on a 0.05% okay. variance. And when you get adjusted by 0 0.05, you get bumped up to the next rating. So if you were 3, but the variance was 0 0.05, you'll get bumped up to 3.5. Right. Um, so you mentioned the timely initiation of care process measure. Um, what is the target time frame to, to shoot for, and at what point do we start to get dinged? You want to look for 24 hours as a timely initi initiation of care. The faster you can see that patient and get that start of care oasis completed and get the patient opened on your services, the higher that rating will be. If you're waiting two or three days to see a patient and to open them under your care, it's going to worse than that rating. Great. Um, so you mentioned the uh, uh, the CAPS and the OASIS. How much of the star rating will come from CAPS um, and how much will it come from OASIS? About one question is going to come from the CAPS data. Okay. But that one question can make you not have ratings or have ratings. The other eight questions are going to strictly come from your OASIS data. Right. Um, so if our ratings um, are going to change each quarter, do we need to change our marketing tactics each quarter? It's advisable to benchmark internally so you can prepare for that if necessary. Um, you don't want to go overboard with this initial data. You know, necessarily we're not recommending to our clients to order a ton of marketing materials that have this new rating on it because when they do the update that could change. If your ratings are consistent for a couple periods then having some type of that reflects that trend would be beneficial but to really um, go overboard with this initial uh, data release isn't worth it at this point. Having materials that are dynamic and can be easily adjusted over the next couple data refreshes is probably the most advisable. Great. Thanks, Lance. Um, great. So there's a question. Can we get a copy of the presentation? Um, so again, this is being recorded, and you can take a look at the recording um, that will be posted by the end of the day on the Shield Healthcare Community site. Um, also, you can download uh, the PDF. Um, you can download it now at shieldhealthcare.com star rating singular FAQ um, and uh, uh, reference that as well. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Um, I'd like to thank Lance Tortolano for the really great and informative presentation.
Um, a couple of housekeeping items. Our next webinar will be an OSME Life webinar on July 23rd. The topics are how to uh, sleep with an ostomy, intimacy with an ostomy, and um, uh, what was the last? Um, how to dress with an ostomy. So July 23rd, um, you can actually sign up on the website uh, right now. Um, again, I'd like to thank Lance for a really great presentation and I'd like to thank the participants on this webinar. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you very much, everyone.